Maker Fair recap, Obama on Twitter, and find out what Google is doing with your vacation photos. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 340 for Monday, May 18th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get right to today's tech news. Kurt Wagner from Recode is joining us. Welcome back, Kurt. Hey, thanks for having me. So you spent some time at the Maker Fair this weekend. Uh, what did you I see? Did. <laughs> I saw uh, I saw quite a bit. Um, it was my first time at Maker Fair, and it's... Have you ever been? I haven't been. I've been to many Maker Fairs, but I haven't been to the big, big Bay Area one. That's I guess this is its 10th anniversary, right? It was. This is the 10th year that they've had it uh, in the Bay Area, and it, it's a really cool experience, I got to say. I wasn't sure what to expect, um, but there's a lot of really interesting people. Um, uh, it's obviously a what they, they refer to them as makers, but essentially inventors and artists and people who just do and create really fun things uh, were there. So there's this really uh, interesting vibe, right? There's a lot of uh, energy and a lot of people just kind of uh, willing to put stuff out there that maybe they wouldn't otherwise um, show off. And so for me, uh, for, as someone who's used to going to these events that are so staged and these big companies put them on and spend months and months planning them, it was fun to see something that was a little bit more spontaneous. Yeah, whenever I've been to anything like this, I have 10-year-old twin boys and a 12-year-old daughter, and they all love to ask questions. And, you know, a lot of these are the places for them because everyone who's made something loves to answer their questions and you know loves to explain exactly. how they did it and why they did it. And I think that's part of what's so amazing about it. Tell, tell us about the Ajax Exosuit. Yeah, so that was one of the cooler, um, I guess, demos that I saw. It's a group of high school kids from a local Bay Area high school, and they're creating this suit and they're, it's supposed to help a human being lift up to, I believe, 400 pounds without any type of uh, exertion. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe these kids are, they want to get into the gym and show off for their friends or something like that. But no, they want this to uh, work kind of in, uh, they were thinking like warehouses, right? So people who are, are physically moving things often for their job, this might be a, a tool that could help them and, and maybe avoid uh, injury, things like that. So it's very far off in the future, I believe. I mean, what they were showing off wasn't it uh, wasn't there yet but um just the idea was cool and the fact that these kids were um i think there were eight of them and seven of them were juniors in high school i mean i can't even remember what i was doing junior year of high school but i know that it wasn't building robots so that's pretty sweet that these kids are doing that yeah and they have an amazing story um we're showing the video that is on recode that you have linked to um because i guess they do this they've been doing this for a few years like they have a big they're from the bay school in san francisco and they have a big group of families that get together and uh sort of i guess crowdsource whatever they're making and they have you know so so many of them to create these different projects and it's it's really interesting video to watch yeah, well, it's also, you know, I think that that's not at all uncommon in the Bay Area now. I, I went to an event, I guess it was almost a year ago now, where a bunch of teenagers were there showing off. Um, it was more apps and, and kind of software related versus kind of this robotics thing. But still, I mean, kids nowadays are, are especially in the Bay Area, getting really uh, into building. And um, it's pretty impressive because they're doing things that... Uh, are way beyond what I can what I could even think about doing. So that's great. Yeah. So you also saw a device that would solve that age old problem of getting out of your chair to get a beer from the refrigerator. Can you tell us about that? I can, and that that might be a more useful device uh, for me in the in the near term. Um, <laughs> but it was uh, from an inventor from Kansas City. He was out here, and he had a couple of of essentially lawn chairs and. He just added some wheels and a uh, motor, and they became motorized kind of lawn chairs, complete with a little umbrella up top to either block out the sun or hopefully you're not lounging outside in the rain. But um, it, when I was talking to him, he was like, oh, well, my inspiration was I was sitting in my garage, and I wanted a beer, and the fridge was all the way over on the other side of the garage. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if I had a chair that could just bring me there? And so 
uh, you know, inspiration strikes in many different ways. But that was um, that was one of the more, uh, I will say, casual uh, examples and something that I, I could have used myself or that maybe I will use someday. So I also saw a, a fleet of R2-D2s. Um, I saw a pink one. I asked you about it. You said it, it, it didn't move. But some of the other ones uh, were being controlled. Uh, what was going on here with the R2-D2s? Uh, so there were some, a couple guys, and they had um, what looked to be old PlayStation controllers, so the video game controllers, and they'd reconfigured um, them, I suppose, to operate these R2-D2s. And they were driving them around, and it was mostly, it seemed more of a thing for, I guess, if you're a Star Wars nut, there were also a lot of kids who were kind of coming up to the railing there and the, the R2-D2s would come up and, and uh, you know, beep back and forth with the kids and, and, and things like that. So it's just kind of a cool way to show off um, what I suppose they were able to do with the, with the controls. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I – hate, I hate to admit this because some people get uh, very offended, but I'm not a huge Star Wars person. I don't know a ton about Star Wars, but I obviously know who R2-D2 was, so I thought that that was kind of a cool uh, little segment of the, of the fair. You're right. People do get offended, Kurt. I'm so, I, I don't even want to, you know, I, I guess we'll go yeah. on because you have some other good stories. I was so going to say, I'll is, just, this, is that the end? Or are we just? <laughs> it might, it might be. It might be. Yeah. Uh, so you had another story about how Obama officially has his own Twitter account at POTUS. Uh, and the, he's had three tweets so far. Um, so he has been tweeting at, at Barack Obama, but it hasn't always been him tweeting there. But at POTUS, that's we're to believe that that's always going to be him. That's the idea. Um, he yes, there was an at Barack Obama uh, account that's technically run by his staff, and then you know when he did tweet, it would they would add his initials at the end, like this is from Barack Obama, essentially trying to identify which ones were coming from the staff, which ones were from him. This account is supposed to be his, and and things that you know only he is sharing, uh, which is cool. I'm sure that there's a lot of people behind the scenes telling him what he can and cannot say, and and all that good stuff. But um, one of the interesting things that, that we learned was that the account, while yes, it is uh, President Obama's for now, it won't necessarily be uh, his account forever. It's owned and, and kind of uh, property of the White House, I guess you could say. And so whoever uh, is the new president um, in 2016, or I guess inaugurated in early 2017, will get to uh, take over the POTUS account. So it will be passed down or... Uh, yeah, passed over to the next president. So that's that's a little interesting uh, fun fact, I guess. Yeah, and we learned that because Bill Clinton asked him a question. Maybe this whole conversation was staged, who knows, but, you know, asked him this question, whether it will stay with the House. And um, Obama, you know, tweeted back a little inside joke, as people do on right. Twitter, asking if anyone was, was interested in the First Lady's account, I guess, which is FLOTUS. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I w it, was w it was very well... Um, very well structured. So either they're they're super witty and on the same page, or someone is is really good at their job in terms of finding out how to take advantage of Twitter. But either way, it was entertaining to watch uh, the two of them kind of go back and forth. Right. Well, we're, we'll not likely see tweet storms or all kinds of you know mistakes that we see. I know you were linking to you linked from your story to the top ten Twitter fails of last year, which were embarrassing. And we probably won't see this from the Ed Potus account. I'm assuming. I would imagine not, but hey, never say never. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, important people tweeting, uh, you have another story about uh, what kinds of social media CEOs are using. Um, tell us a little bit about this study. Yeah, so uh, it's a little, um, the, the, the group that they looked at is a little bit unique. It's just CEOs of the top 50 companies for Fortune's, um, you know, 50 biggest companies list, I guess. Um, and so what it found was that more CEOs have a presence on Twitter than uh, they did two years ago. And fewer CEOs from that group have a presence on Facebook. In fact, none of them from the top 50 companies have a presence on Facebook right now. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't use Facebook in their private lives, but at least from a public facing CEO standpoint, they're not using Facebook to kind of get their name and their brand out there, which is kind of interesting, right? I mean, um, I, I don't necessarily, I guess I'm not super surprised. At the same time, you would think that given how many people are on Facebook, and, and I would imagine the customers of a lot of these companies are on Facebook, it would make sense for these CEOs to have some kind of public-facing public page. But, you know, uh, Twitter's a little bit more uh, useful, I guess, for that kind of thing. So 
I guess that's where that's where they're flocking to. Yeah, it does seem sometimes that people um, get a little bit offended when you use your own you know, personal Facebook account to um, talk about your business or your work stuff. It does sort of seem I felt like that that's more of a let's, you know, talk about our vacations and our, um, you know, pictures right. of babies and stuff. And so it's but the big brands, I mean, obviously, all these CEOs, companies probably have a presence on Twitter, like you were saying. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. But I mean, they could also do they could do a, a page for the CEO, right? Like. They don't, they, these CEOs could have a professional, I'm the CEO of Apple page on Facebook. Plus, uh, you know, Tim Cook could have his own private page where he does share vacation photos or whatever. The fact that none of them have these public facing pages as CEOs is a little, is a little interesting. Yeah. Well, Kurt, thank you so much. Kurt Wagner is a reporter at Recode. Who proofreads your tweets at Kurt Wagner 8? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, no one. So let me know if you hear any, uh, if you see anything I should be deleting. Okay, I'll check. I'll go back to the beginning because that's where people yes, get in trouble, please. I think, usually. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. All right. Take Thanks care. for having me. Bye. Coming up, did a security researcher hack a plane to make it go sideways? And 3D printing saves a turtle. But first, we all love to eat, but it's hard to find a meal that doesn't compromise somewhere. Is it a good value, quick to prepare, healthy and delicious? What's the most important? That's where Blue Apron comes in. Blue Apron makes cooking delicious meals easy and fun by delivering fresh, ready-to-cook meals right to your door. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients, perfectly proportioned with step-by-step -step recipe instructions, including beautifully printed pictures, making cooking healthy meals really easy and fun. You got no more trips to the grocery store, no waste from unused ingredients. Blue Apron is perfect for date night, for cooking with friends, and they even offer family plan plans with kid-friendly ingredients so the whole family can eat well and have fun preparing the meals together. Each balanced meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving. Cooking takes half an hour, shipping is free, and the menus are always new. They won't ever send the same meal twice. Blue Apron works around your schedule and dietary preferences. Their experts source only the best ingredients for incredible meals like flat iron steak with ramps, fingerling potatoes and shaved asparagus salad, and orichetti pasta with English peas, pecorino cheese, and mint. You'll cook incredible meals and be blown away by the quality and freshness. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. You can check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Last week, we talked about Chris Roberts, the security researcher who was removed from a flight after tweeting that he could hack it. Now the Associated Press is reporting that Roberts had told federal agents before this happened that he did hack into aircraft computer systems mid-flight several times and was even able to cause a plane he was on to move sideways. After being criticized by the security industry, Roberts told Wired that this previous conversation with the FBI is being taken out of context. He also claims that the tweet that got him kicked off the plane was meant as a sarcastic joke and a reference to the fact that he's the one who's been trying to encourage airlines to improve their safety. In the past few months, Microsoft has been roundly praised about building their signature apps on iOS and Android, as well as making it easier for developers to create their apps for Windows. But today, TechCrunch reports that the new Windows browser, Microsoft Edge, will be Windows only for now. Google researchers have been using your photos, but don't worry, they're using them to create something very cool. CNET reports that the Google and the University of Washington have created 11,000 time-lapse videos showing the changes in the world's landmarks over time. They've found 86 million publicly available photos taken by tourists of popular places, and they've used them to create time-lapse masterpieces. The researchers use something they're calling time-lapse mining to find photos on Flickr and other places and to put them together to show how the world changes. And finally, you know I have a fondness for 3D printing stories, so keep sending them my way today. And Gadget reports that a company called BT Tech Innovation 3D printed a new jaw for a sea turtle who was injured in an accident. The company used CT scans of the turtle to create a new jaw and beak made of medical grade titanium. Once the turtle has recovered, they will release him back into the ocean looking awesome. 
If you're enjoying the show, I want to see you enjoying it. Send me a TN2 selfie. Here's today's TN2 selfie of the day from Maris Jones, who sent in this photo with the following email. Megan, I took my Macintosh to the Apple store to get the audio fixed. Apparently, there are some crab apples over at the store because they said my jokes were the pits, called me a bad apple, and threw me out. I guess Tim cooked up a way to stop wise guys from wasting their time. Sending a shout out also to Mike Elgin for a great show as well. Thank you, Maris. I am also very fond of puns, so I appreciate that. Tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or just send them an email to TN2 at twit.tv or directly to me at Megan at twit.tv. And don't forget to tell us a little bit about yourself. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.